Oh, you send were away? It, you were doing. You were send it. it. Here I go. I'm gonna there send it go. down. There you oh, go. There oh, Dean, take the win. Dean. Right. He was all right. Oh, you send it back. back again. Okay. There we go. All right. Thank you. Yeah. All right. It just felt right. Space news, and it is time to talk to our buddy Dean Regis is back. We haven't seen you in a little while. Not since a Grand Canyon visit. Yes. That's right. How was how was that? It was awesome. I was at the Grand Canyon and Bryce Canyon. Their star parties. Uh, oh 11 nights all clear oh so we got some great stargazing beautiful. lots yeah. of telescopes it was awesome so was, was it really really hot out there like it it has been yeah it, it was hot it was pretty blazing oh uh, in the 90s uh and but it was a dry heat so that's yeah. a plus. That's, that's what they say. Yeah, yeah. It, was a, it was a dry heat. Uh, we, we do love to bring you in just to talk about sort of the latest happenings up in the heavens. And, and the one that I was mentioning to you during the commercial break, the one that just uh, blows me away. We are back in contact with Voyager 1. Is it Voyager 1? That's right. For the Voyager spacecraft, this is one that left in the 70s. It's, wow. been, I, yeah, it's been out there like as long as, almost as long as we've been alive. It's been just kind of heading that way. That's right. Uh, billions of miles away. It had a glitch where it was sending back uh, messages that were unintelligible. So what do you do with the computer that uh, you got a problem with? Turn it off, turn it back on again. Yes, we know that here well. <laughs> they reset it and somehow it I... still worked. And this is the thing is it has to aim that antenna back to earth so we get the signal. It's not like it can just point anywhere. And so it's back online and uh, you know, sending uh, not gibberish. I don't know what it says when it's not sent. It's like, hey, I'm okay or something <laughs> like that. I don't know. I just, it, it's so fascinating to me, A, that we can continue to communicate with this satellite at all. Um, but even even more to the point, this thing blasts off in the 70s. It's not like it's around the moon or it's around Jupiter or it's even around Pluto. It is it is beyond it's our deep. solar system. Yeah, so it's it's farthest uh, object in space right now, uh, and it is heading out into interstellar space, so it'll leave the solar system. Oh my gosh! But uh, you know, as you know, it's been gone 45 years or so, but it still has about uh, 100,000 years to get to the next star. <laughs> How so, you know, it's getting there. <laughs> how does it I don't how does it maintain its power? How, yeah, like, how does what it, keep it going what's in, it fueled it, by? Right. Yeah, so in space, once you're going a direction, you just keep oh, going. Oh, so it's so kind of no... almost like you see in movies where it just kind of you set something and it just keeps going. <laughs> it just keeps really? going, just okay. like yeah, yeah. And uh, what was it, that movie? Wow. Uh, Gravity. Gravity. Yeah, it was yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, except for that, it was a little off. But anyway, uh, <laughs> there's some there's some technical problems with that, but still, it's yes. just it's it's, it's wild. fascinating. It is. Well, it is. that's not the only fascinating space news. So up next is a, a brand new photo from the James Webb Telescope. These are always good. Of the Serpent Nebula. Yes. Oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah. This is beautiful. a nebula. This is a cloud of gas and dust. It's called an emission nebula, where the light of the stars are lighting up this big interstellar cloud. And and so uh, this is one that's new from the James Webb Space Telescope, getting these amazing color pictures of this. And uh, what we're seeing is the, you know, the birth of stars, basically, in this uh, cool thing. And so this is something that's in our galaxy. Uh, and nebulas like this, uh, you can some, some you can even see in the sky around here. So in the winter, we can see what's called the Orion Nebula. In the summer, we see one called the Lagoon Nebula. And uh, so this is just a real stunning picture taken by the James Webb Space Telescope. So if, for us, this is fitting on our monitor right here. How much? How much space are we like? Like, what are we looking at? Yeah, we're looking at this cloud that's light years across, so trillions of miles across. <laughs> what? I know. And at incredible distances away from us. So this is way out of our uh, solar system. And here we're zooming into these places where these newborn stars are creating these jets of gases going out like this. <laughs> what? I know. It's just, well, it's wild. But I will ask you this, because I, I came and saw you, oh gosh, uh, at the uh, at the Pops, when yeah. they, they were showing the Star Wars movie, you did, you did a talk before that. Is this like some of the other ones, though, where they do sort of put filters on it so the colors pop in different ways? Uh, I was hoping you weren't going to ask ah, about that. Asking. All right, so the colors on these pictures are enhanced. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, they're photoshopped in some cases. Right. Um, so I know that kind of takes away the mystique about it because actually the James Webb Telescope is not... Uh, collecting light in the optical wavelength. It doesn't so, see the way we see. Exactly. Yeah. It's seeing in the infrared mostly, and so you have to assign colors to this energy. So I know the colors are, uh, yeah, there's, Make, a, there's some artistic license going on. So got it. the structures are still there. It just might not look exactly like that. Got it. But I, I understand the fact that they would, in order for us to see it, Correct. you might have to enhance it a little bit They've or else we it. might not be able to visually pick it up. Sort of understand it. Right, yeah. right. All right. 
We're, we're, we're birthing stars in one place. We're exploding novas in another. What's the other thing you got going oh, on? Oh, yeah, the nova has uh, been in the news. This is something where a new star, or not a new star, it's a star, it's a little white dwarf star that's going around a bigger star. Nice artist rendering. I love this. Uh, and the little star, which is right of, I guess there or there. I don't know which one. I guess one of those. Anyway, uh, it's <laughs> siphoning off gas from the larger star, and eventually it will just like have this outburst of light that only happens about once every 80 years. And so astronomers are expecting this to happen any time. Oh and gosh. usually astronomers, when they say any time, they mean any time in the next 10,000 years. Oh. <laughs> this time, they mean any time before fall. And so you might be able to see a star that uh, brightens up suddenly in the nighttime sky and fades away over a day or two. Huh. Now, this only happens once every 80 years, and we haven't seen this since the 1940s. So is it going to happen? Is it not going right. to happen? We're not sure. Is it something you would be able to detect with the human eye? Like if you were stargazing one night, would you be able to see, you know, something get a little brighter and dim or... Is it something you'd have to use a specific telescope to see? So absolutely, it will brighten up very suddenly, and so it'll go from beyond naked eye vision, so you can't see it now with the naked eye, the star's there, and then all of a sudden it'll be bright enough to be, bright enough to be about as bright as the North Star. So oh, wow. it's okay. in the constellation Corona Borealis, the northern crown, so that's up in the nighttime sky, pretty high up in the sky after dark, and so all I'm doing is watching every night and I'm like seeing if something new pops up yeah. not tonight and then waiting to see if some people catch it uh, you know it's one of those things where it could happen any day it could be any time between now and the end of the year so fascinating so, so it's really cool I just want to make sure I understand the process of these two stars and so it's not like one of them ceases to exist it's just over time one of them steals a bunch of gas so from the like other one and then goes Bleh! exactly yeah it's like uh you well you know we're having skyline for breakfast here yeah, yeah. so it's you know what's gonna happen later <laughs> us but still it's like that and it doesn't take 80 years no no or it's like when i come in in a bad mood in the morning and then i'm next stand next to bob i absorb some of his <laughs> great That's energy it. and then i go Bleh! yeah and you guys <laughs> oh no no hopefully i don't give you <laughs> continue to exist energy. you shine brightly and then and then then it's chill out again then, yeah, then, yeah. okay yeah, All that's right. kind of what the eight o'clock hour is. We just go, <laughs> yeah. Blah! and then we kind of chill out again. Yeah, that's right. That's true. Dean, we love when you come yeah, in. Yeah, thank you so much. Appreciate My the visit pleasure. as always. We'll see you again yeah. soon. Yeah, My pleasure. Keep letting us know about all this great stuff that's always happening. He breaks it down so well. All right. You can always get local stories right here on YouTube, but go ahead and hit that subscribe button to get notifications to stay in the know.